All right, this is the 10 and 2, the famous 10 and 2. I think Crosby and McDavid made this really famous. Makar has made it even more famous. And so the 10 and 2 is just this. We can call it a mohawk, you call it whatever. We just, at Train 2.0, our language is it's a 10 and 2. So it's just heel to heel, just like that. You can do it all sorts of different ways. You can do it just like in a circle. You can do a figure eight. You can do all those different things. So what a lot of people don't realize is that the 10 and 2 is not a mobility thing. It's actually a skill thing. And most people don't do enough reps on it. I'm gonna show you how to do enough reps so you can feel comfortable using it. It's just like if you've never written the word the, T-H-E. When you are a child and you're one year old, you don't know how to do it. After writing it a gajillion times, it's like hard to forget. So here's how you progress, here's how you learn it. The first thing is when you go over to the boards here, what you start to find is that with the 10 and two, you actually don't need to like have a ton of mobility to get into the position. So what you'll see is I can just simply arrange my toes out, go heel to heel, and I can just hold myself here. It's actually quite simple. And a lot of players, when they first get started, they get super tight. You can see I've lost shin angle here, my hips are tight. But then what they can start to find is they can actually trust their edges and they can relax their ankles, they can relax into that Y angle, they can relax their, their shins forward so their knees go over their toes and they get that aggressive heel pressure and they can relax their hips. I definitely don't have very good hip mobility, but you don't need it to get into here. I've had tons of players who have, they come to me, they say, I can't tend into, I don't have the mobility. Well, usually you can. Uh, it's just a matter of starting to relax and understanding this position. So this is the first thing. The second thing is once you kind of get a handle of using your edge, it's to understand that a 10 and two is not about holding it. A lot of players will do their 10 and two and then they hold it. That is like a really hard thing to do. It, it requires, that requires mobility, that requires balance and strength and all sorts of stuff. But it's not about making it harder, it's about making it easier. So if I go back to the wall here, and I, I get into that position, I'm relaxed, then it's actually just about shifting your weight foot to foot. And what you may or may not see here is that I'm putting my weight through my heels, keeping my toes up, keeping my knees forward. So I'm just stepping foot to foot. Now you don't always see that when you see Crosby doing it, but what's happening is the weight is just shifting foot to foot. So I'm just shifting my weight foot to foot, and that's how a 10 and two can be done very very easily so there's no like magic to it it's literally just get comfortable with it then shift your weight foot to foot keeping all of the pillars in mind so relaxed shoulders hand in the crevice and then you know being able to have your weight on your heels knees forward so different ways i can practice once i get comfortable there my main way of doing this is just alternating feet from here to here to here to here we see this drill with McDavid quite a bit where he's doing the alternation from feet to feet. And what that teaches you is just to shift your weight. It also teaches you how to stride the downhill way, which we're not going to get into here, but it allows you to open up your hips and start to feel that flow. Once you've actually started being able to do it alternating, that's when we can actually go into the multiple uh, 10 and twos. And I always recommend starting around a circle like this. And then I usually do like a figure eight uh, pattern like this, headed the other way. Now, as I practice, I wanna have hands and feet moving together. All the things we talked about, this is to do it around a circle. And then, like I said, this is how you do it in motion. So there's so many ways you can do this. Like I said, the way that you regress and learn it is against the boards then learning just to shift your weight, and then you can start to add it to so many things to improve your deception, improve your puck protection. There's all sorts of things you can do with it. So you'll see that a lot through the downhill skating system and Train 2.0 stuff. Hey, thanks for watching this video. If you wanna learn more about Train 2.0 and the downhill skating system, which is the foundation to all hockey mechanics, all hockey skills, all hockey sense, we've put together a little free training for you. It's five parts, five secrets to how to move like NHLers using the downhill skating system. And that's available for you if you click the link and you can sign up and you can go through those lessons to learn this yourself. Thanks for watching and we'll see you then.